We're going to be ranking the 2023 rookie running backs into tiers, but with a twist. It's not going to be for Dynasty. It's not going to be for Fantasy. It's going to be based off my emotions. We're going to roast a lot of these running backs. We're going to talk shit on a lot of these running backs. We're going to bust some balls today. But before we start busting some balls, you need to click that subscribe button because we're going hard in the paint this offseason. We're going to be talking about these rookies for the 2024 class as we get closer to the draft. And we're going to go hard in the paint in these rookie drafts, mock drafting a few times a week, giving you rankings and everything else. Click that subscribe button. Stop missing out. But here you're going to see a tier list. And in this tier list, we're going to rank these running backs from the 2023 class by my emotions. Not by how I think they played, but part of my emotions are going to be about that. Not about how I project them going forward, just how I feel about them. And you know what? We're going to go hot and heavy right now. We're going to go after a big dog. I'm just going to throw him right here in the middle here to B. But let's talk about B. John Robinson real quick. He was billed as a generational talent, a top-tier prospect. We've been waiting for him to come out for the NFL draft since high school. He got that draft capital. He went to the Falcons, and we're just waiting for him to go gangbusters. He gave us a little taste of what he could do, but he wasn't dominant. And then Arthur Smith comes in here and says, wait a minute, I'm going to use Tyler Algier some. I'm not going to give him some touches on this day. I just don't feel like it. And this team does some weird stuff. Can Bijan Robinson control that? Not really. But really, did he step up and really take over as a top-tier generational talent? He hasn't done it yet. He has not done that yet. However, it's kind of salty that he's had some games here that he did not produce in the box score to help us out in fantasy football. However, you can see the talent. It's oozing from his veins. You can't hate on him too much. If I'm ranking him for real, it's higher. But based off my emotions, B. John Robinson, I'm going to have to just put you in A. Just going to have to put you there. You did good enough this year. You did good enough to score some fantasy points. But it wasn't enough to live up to the billing of up here. We need more from you, whether you can help it or not. And for those people who could not make it farther into the fantasy playoffs, I have to put you in A. I have to do it. But let's look at another rookie here. Let's look at a guy who's been on the come up, who's starting to percolate a little bit, and it's going to be interesting how we're going to feel about him going forward, but I like him a lot. I liked him a lot going into the draft. I liked him after the draft. I was waiting for him to do something all season long. And then against Jacksonville, Chase Brown, I'm going to put him there right now, steps up, starts getting touches and snaps, and then he hits the next week. We saw how explosive he is. Now we're going to be going into year two. He's got a foothold into that RB2 position there for the Bengals. We can see the upside. A guy that we're going to be liking in fantasy going forward as a trendy play off and on. We're going to be talking about him a lot next year. We're going to be watching him preseason and training camp. But Chase Brown, where should we rank him? Because he's not in stud tier for sure. He's not in A tier for sure. He percolated a little bit. We got to like that. B tier, kind of want to keep open. How about... When we think about him, and we talk about Chase Brown, how about we keep him in C tier? Just keep him right there. If we want to move him later, we can. I don't hate Chase Brown. There's a lot of upside there. And C is probably going to be that tier where we like him, but they can do a little bit more, and we're waiting for them to do a little bit more, and they've earned to be in C tier, and there might be a prospect or two that didn't do anything this year, but we like because we're still waiting for them to create their or, or get their opportunity. But still, Chase Brown here is in C tier right now. The next guy we're going to talk about, and he's a guy that came on as of late, kind of, due to injuries. But now he's hurt, 
and he's a late round prospect. Might be getting more opportunities here in 2024. And that's Chris Rodriguez. And I'm going to slide him here at D. Just give him some visibility. But going up, talking about Chris Rodriguez here. We're talking about a late round prospect who's a bigger running back who is very productive out of Kentucky. The thing about him is he did not climb the depth chart that well. Brian Robinson is that dude. Brian Robinson was in year two. Still got some more years left on his contract. Antonio Gibson flatlined on us. He sure did. And now we're looking at Chris Rodriguez. And can you step up this offseason? Odds are there's a good chance they bring in another running back. But the 2024 running back class isn't too great. So this could be a Chris Rodriguez show as the RB2 for the Commanders. And if something happens to Brian Robinson, he might get his opportunity next year. I can't hate on Chris Rodriguez. I kind of wish he did a little bit more. He's kind of in that Chase Brown tier where he did a little bit, not as much as Chase Brown, but he's in that tier where you're like, we're going to wait for 2024. Let's see if you can kick it up a notch. Let's see if we can do it. Now another running back here. We're waiting for 2024 to happen. However, I don't think it's going to happen. And I think they're going to be bringing in more running backs after what we saw this year. I like him as a player because he's fun to watch on the field, especially in preseason. But I just don't think it's going to happen for him. Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn. Let's put him up here in S tier because he's never going to be in S tier anywhere else in his life until right now. But Deuce Vaughn, the micro machine running back who we talked about this offseason where things really got to break. For him to get some opportunities. Things never really broke. Tony Pollard stayed relatively healthy. Rico Dowdle was there. Siphoning workload. Deuce Vaughn was getting opportunities in preseason. And in training camp. And he was looking okay there. But he really couldn't do anything this year. And there's good odds. Considering how Tony Pollard looked this year. That the Cowboys are more than likely going to bring in another running back. Either through free agency or the draft. Like they're going to keep bringing in running backs. Until they get this right. Because look at what this run game looked like. And then if they were able to just bolster the production out there by another 10-20%, this team's looking a lot different. That being said, when we look at Deuce Vaughn, the odds of him just moving up, the odds of him just getting in C tier, B tier next year is almost non-existent. Things really have to break. Deuce Vaughn, let's not put him in E because he's a good guy. But we know C tier is really not there for him. We're not looking for him in 2024 to do big things. Things have to break for that to happen. He's a late round prospect. Late round running backs have to do something as a rookie. And even at that, even at that, there's no sunk cost invested in them. Now, there's a big time running back that's next here that I want to look at, that I want to talk about here. And I'm going to put him in E tier, and then we're going to move him up to where he needs to be after we talk about him. Because I want the people who are not watching the video and just skimming along to get gyrated over this. And we're talking about Devin Achan, 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 H-E-T-T. He needs to be lower tier just because, like, he had to hide how we said his name until, like, the third week of the season. We went through high school with his name being said one way. Then we get to college. His name's getting said a few different ways. And then we get to the NFL. And now his name's all over the place. And then he finally corrects us. Should have did that in high school, man. Should have did that in high school. But this guy, when it comes to value, skyrocketed. He sure did. He's going to be a top-tier player here in 2024. Redraft, you're going to have to pay out the ass for him. Dynasty, you already have to. Because... He's a rookie who exploded, and he's continuing to explode. He exploded last week, over 20 fantasy points. And that's what you're going to get out of him when he's healthy. He has to be healthy. He's already been nicked up a few times already. That is in the cards right now. But again, that's something in the air over there in Miami because all the running backs are getting hurt. But still, a young guy, very productive. Very productive. And when I see Devin H in here, A-Chan, A-Chain, whatever 
I'm going to put him around B. John Robinson in this tier. I like him. I like him a lot. I'm going to be trying to get him next year. If I get in any more startup drafts, which I'm trying not to, I'm going to be getting him. I'm going to try to pay up a little bit. However, running backs, the thing is, I don't really chase running backs. I chase wide receivers. So I may not end up with many of these top-tier running backs anymore unless they fall to a discount. That being said, we got to move on. We got to move on. And we got another big time or highly named or big named rookie running back here. And I'm going to pull him up. And I'm going to put him in a S tier right now just to gyrate some folks here. And that's Roshan Johnson. And he's been a cock tease all season long because there are some games where he looks like he's about to produce, he's spicing up the spreadsheets catching some balls, seeing some targets. Then the next game, Khalil Herbert just runs over faces. The next game, Deontay Foreman takes over the backfield. He did not step up. He did not step up, take over this backfield. This was a backfield where if you're a good prospect and you're a prospect that can take it to the next level, you can take it over. I'm not saying Khalil Herbert's a dud or Foreman, they're actually very respectable for what they are. But again, if you're a rookie running back, you're stepping into a situation like this, and you're a next-tier talent, then you're going to take over. He's not. He's definitely not because this was his opportunity. That being said, he did show a little bit of promise. He did more than some other running backs out there. Definitely less than HN and B. John Robinson here. We're going to have to put him in B range because he's been on the field all season long since week one. He's been getting opportunities. He's been doing some stuff. There are some games where he gets five, six targets, and that's showing some promise and some opportunities there. He's also going to be very cheap in fantasy, but he could have earned his way up to A range this year. He could have been there. He could have earned his way up to S range. He could have did that. But instead, instead he did not live up to it. He did not take over. Roshan Johnson is a guy that should have done more and hopefully he does next year. But now it's time to move on. Dwayne McBride. Dwayne McBride. I don't think there's much to say. I think we're going to get in 2024. And you guys are going to forget his name. You're going to forget he existed. He caught like five passes during his three-year career in college. He only caught like five. What's the upside here? He can rumble between the tackles. He was productive at UAB. But we needed him to step up fast here in Minnesota. We needed that to happen. It fell on his face. I think we got our first running back here going to E-tier. And we're just going to throw him in there. Dwayne McBride. Bus City here, move on from here. And now, our next running back. And I'm going to put him here next to Deuce Vaughn. Right there, Jameer Gibbs. Just so he can get somebody sparked up. Just so he can get somebody in the fields. But, Jameer Gibbs. Monster season. Started off a little dicey, sharing the backfield with David Montgomery. Those who were not patient Got bit and redrafted. They traded him away because he's been stellar. Been looking good. Jameer Gibbs has a lot of pop in his step. Runs with 4-3 speed. Good between the tackles. Broke out with two different collegiate programs there. Georgia Tech and Alabama. Catches the ball well out of the backfield. And when this team is done with David Montgomery, they're probably going to bring in another running back. But he's always going to be that dude. They spent the 12th overall pick for a reason, and he looked like he was almost worth it. Positional value matters in real football, but you know, when we're talking about fantasy football, we're gonna move this guy up the S tier. S tier, in my feels, in my hearts, he did not hurt me. He did not hurt me. I had an idea in the start of the season that he was gonna be sharing it, the backfield with Dave Montgomery anyways. I had an idea that was gonna happen. But I remained faithful, and he did not steer me wrong. Jameer Gibbs, I have to reward you with the S tier here. I have to. But we got more running backs to talk about. 
because there's a running back here that I imagine if you've been following the channel, you've been waiting for me to talk about him in this video because you want to see where my feelings are at. And the thing is, he was free all off season long. He was free during most of the season. And then he got his opportunity, and then he blew up. In value, in Dynasty, you could have really sold and got a decent return on investment, depending on your league, depending on how liquid he was in your league, if he was even sellable. That being said, he's the running back that shot up in value. But we got some circumstances here that really impact things. But this is a rankings list of my feelings. My feelings, not how I think a player should be valued. Not how I think a player should be ranked for real fantasy football. It's about how they rank in my heart. And we're busting balls today. And we're also gloating over our favorite players. Who am I talking about? Who am I talking about? Write in the comments right now. Write it. But... Keaton Mitchell, Keaton Mitchell, where should he be? Where should we put Keaton Mitchell here in the Bruce Matson metric scout feeling rankings here? Because you know what? Keaton Mitchell really helped the channel. I owe it to him. And maybe I talked about him so much that I manifested that mini breakout. It ended horribly with the injury. 2024? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know if you're going to be able to sell him or trade him away really in Dynasty. I don't think he's going to be that liquid due to him having no draft capital and him having no sunk costs invested in him. And this team can just continue to bring in running backs at will. And they might as well. That's how you really should be doing things in the NFL because you're coming back from a devastating injury. I hope things are good, but my feelings are Keaton Mitchell, man, man, what could have been, what could have been, the touches weren't always there, but every time you watched him carry the ball, you held your nuts a little bit because you did not know if he was going to house it, and when you put him in your fantasy lineup, even in those dud weeks, because of that factor, it added the fun value to your lineup that week whether he scored zero or 20 that's what happened and i love that that being said my feelings here look at roshan johnson where should i put him here fuck that fuck roshan johnson however my feelings my heart says a my heart says a and the reason why is because this guy is gritty came up from a udfa climbed the depth chart Looked good in preseason, had some injuries, went to IR, came back, got injured again, was out for a little bit, came back, and then hit it. Hit it good. We had some low moments there where he wasn't getting much workload, where he didn't hit in fantasy production, but it was off and on. However, that injury's big time. If this was real fantasy rankings, he'll be down there quite a bit because I'm not looking forward to him for 2024 unless we get a big rebound this summer pay attention to him but the odds are against him but when it comes to my heart it's not going to move on from keaton mitchell and if somebody's watching this and they're not paying attention to what i'm saying and they're just going through the pictures i hope they go nuts in the comments i hope they do and that's for you too buddy next eric gray oh eric gray had his opportunity when saquon got hurt he had his opportunity when Saquon got hurt. This was his time to take over, grab the reins, and be the RB2 for the team. He had that opportunity. He could have had that moment. He kind of flirted a little bit, but it did not happen. It did not happen. And we saw what we saw this year. We know going forward, we're going to be getting a lot of nothing. Maybe there's a moment next year where a couple games happen, Saquon's out. Maybe he gets some touches. Are you excited about him? Because I'm not. I'm not excited about him. Let's throw him down there to E. Let's throw him down there. Let's throw him out in the trash. Let's throw him there. Because you know what? He's not even fun. It's not like we can say he's Deuce Vaughn and he's a midget out there running around five foot nothing. 
and it's fun to watch him out there. There's no fun factor there. He's just there. Gray didn't do well during his rookie season. Keep him down there. Looking at the list here, next player up, one of my favorite late round stashes, and we have to rank him a certain way due to his predicament. And when I throw him up here, you're going to understand why, and that is Evan Hall. Evan Hall from Northwestern. The thing about him is he tore his ACL early in the season. Jonathan Taylor got hurt. He would have got some opportunities. However, during training camp, during preseason, you weren't hearing much about him. You weren't hearing much about him. He might have got his opportunity to step up, but Zach Moss did his job. Evan Hall, though, tore that ACL. Who knows what could have happened? But I don't think it would have been that good. We're just going to put him at D for fun factor. D for fun factor should have just made it an F. Let's make it an F real quick. Fun factor. There. Fun factor, but sucks. That's what that means. But I like Evan Hall. Am I getting him more in fantasy? I mean, if I got some shares in Dynasty, and I know I can't liquidate them for whatever reason, it is what it is. And if I got to move on, I got to move on. I don't care anymore. Next is another guy I liked. And he went to the wrong situation because he's got a hoss in front of him. A big time hoss. Izzy Abanaconda. Abanaconda. For the New York Jets. That's Brees Hall's job. That's his forever. He might get his opportunity later. He did get some snaps this year. He did do some things this year, but not enough to really get on the radar. He's got a lot of fun factor there. Maybe if something happens to Brees Hall, knock on wood, because I like Brees Hall, we can get some opportunities. But honestly, let's put him in the fun factor, and let's have him lead the charge. Because he did not do enough to really flash this year yet. He did do enough to let us know that he can still lead the charge in the fun factor, even though Brees Hall is locking it down. But we know he's not going to get his opportunity to be the one B back because it's going to be Brees Hall forever. And maybe an injury, maybe some time later, down the road in his career, he can step it up. But you know what? It's going to be hard. This next guy really, really, really did not step up. He really fucked us over. It's Kendra Miller. And the thing is, Alvin Kamara... Didn't get hurt this year and played well, of course. And the old age did not set in with him and had a very good season. But Kendra Miller also, also thinking about him, got bit by the injury bug multiple times and was not able to step it up. Kendra Miller did not step it up this season. He did not live up to the draft capital. Maybe next year. Maybe he could be a decent buy next year at a cheaper price, that could be happening. You do not throw him out with the bathwater. However, our feelings from this year, with him being one of those rookies that we were drafting in the later rounds as a dart throw, this dart throw did not hit the target, let alone the dart board. It hit the wall, went out the window, and really muddied the waters here. And we looked at him as a pickup a few times. He did have a little bit of production, but not enough. He's not in Fun Factorville. He did screw us over. Mentally, we should be putting him in E. But right now, like, honestly, he should be in B. But he's not going to be in B because he fucked us over. And now you're going to have to hang out with Chase Brown. You're kind of in that situation. We have to see what this backfield looks like. But you got to step things up, Ken J. Miller. You have to step things up. You got to show off. You got to do something. Ken J. Miller, you're hurting us right now. And we need you. We need you to do something. We need you to live up to that draft capital. A lot of people drafted you in the latter part of the first round rookie drafts last year. And you did nothing. Let's go to another running back. Let's get positive here. But we really can't. But Kenny McIntosh. Kenny McIntosh chilled on the IR most of the season. He was hurt. Got a little bit of opportunity. But you know Zach Charbonnet, Kenneth Walker. Hard to surpass them. Maybe after another preseason or so, maybe he can get some snaps. Fancy-wise, it's really hard to trust him. But you know what? The Seattle fan base loves this guy. 
and he's kind of fun. I'm going to put him in the fun factor area where you're, we're going to be watching him. Of course, ahead of Deuce Vaughn. You know what? Hall goes ahead now. Right there. That's fine. But, of course, ahead of Deuce Vaughn right there. Izzy, who cares? But, Kenny McIntosh, fun factor. Can catch the ball in the backfield. Can catch it downfield as well. Could be a PPR back here in the future, which is something we're excited about. He didn't do jack shit this year, but Kenny McIntosh could be on the rise if weird stuff continues to happen with his backfield, which it has been. Now we got a stinker coming up. A big one. Lou Nichols. Lou Nichols. Do you remember this guy? I bet you don't. I bet you a round seven pick here. Didn't do anything with the Packers. Very productive like two years ago. But did not do anything his final year in college due to injuries. Looked good. On his Instagram in the off season, we covered that. But he's going to E. I doubt we hear his name again. I highly doubt it. We're going to keep him there. But now it's time to really start ripping people. It's now time to do it. Because this guy had the world eaten out of his hands. Unfortunately, he had a condition happen that allowed him to fall in the draft. Especially during the combine, his stock dropped immensely. But he started... To really get his stock percolating a little bit in training camp and then preseason a shade, but could not grasp the reins this season. His career is in jeopardy. That's Sean Tucker. Sean Tucker was that guy everybody was rooting for in the start of the season. He fell in the draft. A good idea of why he fell in the draft was due to a heart condition. He got cleared after the draft. Eventually, we started to see him practice. We started to see him in training camp in preseason. There were some moments where you could see that he might be starting to get more snaps. Rashad White did a good job this year keeping everybody at bay. Sean Tucker, though, should have did more. Your pedigree says you should have did a lot more. This whole time, you should have did a lot more. And I like you. I want to put you in the fun factor range because that's really where you should belong. However... You have more upside than all of these guys. What we saw during your collegiate career at Syracuse, you have more upside. You have upside around these guys. For sure. You did not live up to it. You got cleared. You had your opportunities to climb the depth chart. You did not. We're going to have to punish you, Sean Tucker, and throw you in the E tier. Do better, Sean Tucker. Do better. We need you to move up. We need you to do something next offseason. Climb this depth chart because this is insane. This should not be happening. But next is another running back who failed and fall, fell on his face. And that is Tank Bigsby. Fell hard on his face. Fell hard on his face this year. He was the 1B back, the RB2 on the team starting the year. Starting the year, he was pushing to be a 1B back. He sure was. And then all of a sudden, Tank Bigsby just started losing more snaps each week. And next thing you know, other running backs were stealing his snaps. That was happening. And he was not setting the world on fire with his carries. Was not doing it. You can tell that the writing's on the wall. That they're going to be looking for a 1B back sooner than later. And it might not be Tank Bigsby there. He might be just lurking around on the depth chart. He failed this year. He had opportunities and he did not run with it. He sure didn't. We were not expecting him to take over Travis Etienne's role. We were expecting him to have a good game here or there in production. Could not do it. Could not do that. We cannot put him in E tier. We can't put him in fun factor because this shit ain't fun. But if I put him in C tier and put him around Chase Brown and Kendra, that's not really fair. I'm going to put him behind Chris Rodriguez as punishment. You need to step it up, Tank Bigsby. You probably need to be an E-tier, really, just to light a fire under you. That's what we're going to do. We're going to light a fire under Tank Bigsby. We're going to put him in E-tier. Maybe he steps it up. If he doesn't, he ain't going to be worth jack shit. But Tajay Spears. Tajay Spears had a good year for what he was. A smaller running back next to Derrick Henry was getting over a 50% snap share each week. And then was starting to be 
productive over the back half of the season. Tajay Spears is a good running back and catch the ball out of the backfield. I like him a lot. Put him around Roshan Johnson. Just put him around there. Good for B. I look for him to get more opportunity next year. I feel like he could be a good back as a money ball play in fantasy football. But our next running back, Zach Charbonnet. We're talking about him. And the thing about Zach Charbonnet is he had the opportunity to be a lot more. He had the opportunity to be a B tier, A tier, S tier. He had the opportunity to be one of these guys. Oops. He had the opportunity to be one of these guys right here. He had the opportunity to be in this range. And he had his moments. He had his moments where he was productive. And he was okay there. But honestly, when I look at Zach Charbonnet, wasn't bad at all either. He got the job done. He was used in the passing game. Kenneth Walker's better. Kenneth Walker beat him out for the RB1 role pretty easily. Decent RB2 role. These two running backs get hurt a lot. They both got hurt multiple times this year. I'm going to put them in the B range. B range, however you want to do it, I don't even care. Once you hit B range, I don't even care where you're at. I'm just going to play around with them. He could have done more. He could have done more. He could have stepped it up. We got one more running back, though, we're going to talk about. If a running back didn't make the list because they were a UDFA or whatever, so be it. These are my feeling rankings here. But Zach Evans. Zach Evans. Oh, my goodness. We're talking about a running back who was deemed as one of the top running backs in college football for a long time. For a very long time. He was a five-star recruit. Had a lot of upside. Then we get to the combine. We get to the combine. This guy comes in underweight. And comes in slow for his weight. And we're like, what the fuck? Then we get to the NFL draft. And this guy falls in the draft. Falls to round six. And we're like, what the fuck? And then it's with the Rams. You see Kyron Williams there. And you know, hey, there, he's getting a million touches a game. Eventually, he's going to break down. Zach Evans is going to get his opportunity. That happens. They bring in Daryl Henderson. They said, hey, hey, you guys think this guy... Should have been around here, but really he's around here. The biggest failure of all running backs, and you know what? We said it during draft season. Zach Evans right here. He's a running back that doesn't have it between the ears. He's a crazy nutcase. This guy catfished almost every collegiate program during the recruiting process, pretending he was going to go to every single one of those schools. And then turns around and signs with TCU of all places. Plays a couple years there. Pretends that he's going to go and sign with Deion Sanders where he was at at the time. But then goes to Ole Miss and be the one B back. He failed then. The writing was on the wall. You're an A tier. You failed us, Zach Evans. You failed us. And that is my feelings rankings on these 2023 rookie running backs i'll have some real rankings out soon but honestly i wanted to talk some ball i want to talk about these running backs and i can jibber jabber on these rookies all day long make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out i want to thank you for watching catch you on the next video